right, so today I received in the mail here the Bandit Meshtastic Compatible Nodes. I'm gonna open these up. They just came in. And we're gonna see, wow, they really taped this box up on. Boy. That's a wasteful amount of tape, but I get it, it's coming from overseas. So, I guess they gotta do what they do. Wow, that's just a lot. <laughs> well, it makes me feel like the product would ship well though, I'll tell you that. And I've got one, two of these puppies. Nothing else in the box. No hidden elements missing. So let's just do this. Let's put one over here so it looks pretty. And then we'll open this one up and, and see what we think of them. The box is uh, good. Banded Nano, Banded Micro appear, appear to use the same box. But I think I've got the Bandit Nanos in here. Um, we'll go ahead and use this as the trash box. All right. So we'll open this up. And coming out first, it appears that we have the little dipole antenna. <clears throat> Let's see how this works out. Feed Oscar the Grouch over here. All right, so we've got a nice, well-built uh, dipole antenna. Looks like a center-fed dipole, unless I'm completely inaccurate. Um, the bottom appears to be an RPSMA. Well, that's no fun. But that's okay. We can fix it with an adapter, and I can also send in a change request to Bandit and ask them to make one with an SMA mail on it. Um, anyways, so let's take a look at this. We'll go ahead and uh, make sure nothing else is in the box that we need. And we will do the big reveal. That appears to be the back. And we flip it over. It's a very well-made device. Yep, RPSMA. I guess that's what they use in the drone world. But that's okay. Again, nothing that can't be solved with an adapter, right? And it's got this uh, this sliding clip bus adapter. I guess that connects to the drone controller that you're using. So this is, is very much a drone controller that apparently happens to support Meshtastic. So we shall see what is required. Uh, let's get the antenna on very uh, first and foremost. Because I don't know if these have protection on the outputs against no antenna being installed. So there we go. What do you think? And then our directions here. I doubt that they say anything about Meshtastic. Nope. This is all for a <clears throat> a drone based situation so we'll go ahead and uh, we'll see if we can't figure out how to flash this thing with no directions whatsoever I'm assuming if I hold down the center here that would be the power that would turn it on and I'm wrong maybe it's not charged yeah maybe that was the right thing huh and you'll notice when it boots up, it's looking for a remote controller for like a drone. And you know, well, we're not a drone. It says no handset. So all we have to do is go to flasher.meshtastic.org, go to select target device, go down here to Radio Master 900 Bandit Nano. You'll see I'm connected with a serial cable, not a USB-C to USB-C, but a USB-C to a standard USB, uh, USB cable. Um, USB 
B or whatever, I don't know, standard one. And then um, you go in here, you choose Radio Master 900 Bandit Nano, select firmware version. I'm going to go with 24139 uh, Alpha. And then you simply go over to Flash. Scroll down, read all this if you want to. Um, click continue. And at the bottom, you want to click on full erase and install. Make sure that's on. And then all you do is hit go, erase and install. And then you're going to pick up here. I'm doing this from a Mac. It might show up different on Windows, but uh, it's the, the controller that shows up that I pick is the one with the word slab in it, S-L-A-B. So it's the uh, CP2102 USB to UART bridge controller CU.slab. The other one doesn't appear to work, but the, uh, the CU.slab does. So hit connect, and then it just starts to do its thing. And now all you really have to do is wait. And then once that's done, you simply pair it to the Bandit. Uh, pair your uh, cell phone Meshtastic app to the Bandit via Bluetooth which I'll show you next, and uh, that'll be it. It'll be a done deal. So I would save you all the, you know, watching of this thing because it takes a while. It's probably about a five minute process. It's, it's like a five minute process, but the first thing it does is it goes through flashing the app partition, which is basically like clearing the partition and putting the boot records in and stuff. And then after that, it goes to initializing and flashing and then it writes the flash so there's like kind of three steps to it the first step is the slowest the next two steps are very fast after it reboots you should be able to see it on your bluetooth and just pair it and i'll show it to you next okay so this is done and you can see that it's got meshtastic on it now um i would go ahead and reboot it you'd see the logo and all that but i missed filming that part no big deal not a big miss but basically now all you do is you go into the meshtastic app and in the app, you go to Bluetooth. Um, no device connected, that's fine. We're gonna connect to Mestastic 0658, which should be this one, and it is because it pops up with the code that I need to join it, 990070. There we go. Now, it should connect to that right now. And then the first thing we're going to do is set the LoRa region. We're going to set it to United States. And then set number of hops. You'd probably want to put it at like four or five for now. I'm putting mine at seven because I do a lot of testing that requires me to do that. But put yours at like four or five. And oh, uh, frequency slot zero. Don't change it. Just leave it where it is. You'll see a lot of people in a lot of documentation that tend to tell you to change it to 20, but don't do that because it knows it's 20 already if you leave it there. So just leave it at zero. Then hit save config. And then we're gonna wait. It's rebooting as you can see here. Once it's done rebooting, we'll be able to join it again. It might automatically join it, which it is. And it should this uh, set lower region should go away, which it did. Next thing we're gonna do is go over to settings and we're gonna go down to, or up to user settings and you're gonna set a name for your device. And we're gonna call this one, I don't know, trash bag. Why not, right? And we're gonna make the short name T-R-S-H. <laughs> I don't know why I picked that name, but hey, for the, for the demonstration, it works. You can pick whatever you want. Uh, so many pop-up messages, sorry about that. So Trash Bag is the, short, is the long name, and the short name is T-R-S-H, and I'm gonna go ahead and save it. Do not turn on licensed operator, unless you're a ham radio operator, and even if you are, nobody uses that, so don't at least for now. It's rebooting. Now that it's coming back up, we should be able to check Bluetooth, make sure it rejoins. It knows the name is correct. It's gonna subscribe to Mesh, it's good. Now we can go in here and go to, go in here and go to channels. 
um, under messages, right? You go to channels and then you go to primary channel and then you can say hello and you will see it'll come back and it says acknowledged. There you go. And that is how you configure the bandit super fast and easy. Hope you enjoyed the video. So, you know, I got the bandits. They're really cool. They look great. They're kind of interesting. Um, don't like the antennas because they're not really good to carry around like that. I guess they are. I mean, they're, they're cool. They're really well made and everything. Let's see how the signal works. But, um, you know, LilyGo is great. Um, its antenna is not good because it just doesn't work too well. But overall, the one thing that LilyGo has going for it is that it has a battery built in. And, you know, I figured that these would charge up and uh, I'd be able to just use them, but that's not the case. They need power or apparently maybe there's some kind of battery pack that can slide on here, which will make them thicker. But there is no built-in battery, apparently. So, uh, while I sat here like an idiot, pushing the button for the long hold, they call it the long press, to see if it would come on, it never came on. And then I realized, oh my gosh, there's no battery in there. And I kind of, you can kind of see through the crack, the circuitry, and there's definitely not a battery in them. Uh, so while they're really interesting and they probably work really well based on other reviews that I've seen, um, it's highly likely that they're not too great for portable use because you have to add a battery pack to them. Um, I'm gonna look into that, but for now, I'll try them as a node of some sort. Probably, uh, maybe I'll use it for my dual Yagi node that I'm building right now instead of the, uh, the G2s just to see how it works. Or maybe I'll make two of those with four Yagis total and see which one works better. Be interesting. So we'll take it from there and I'll let you know.